ready for the Lord. Amen. We already ready for him. Trust me, I know we are. The Spirit is in this place already. It's the day of day of Pentecost. Pentecostal Sunday. When the Spirit fell fresh. Amen. The church was born. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask you all to just meditate on this purpose as we go into our Pentecostal today. Let the Spirit fall fresh on each of us this morning. Nothing like being awoken with the freshness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We can feel his presence this morning. Yes. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. Yes. 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 In your presence, Lord, with our arms open wide, with lifted hands and with open heart, we welcome you. Oh! 
fall fresh Please. 
Sunday. Somebody say Pentecost Sunday. We should have the Holy Spirit. Somebody need to be speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God did it for them, he can do it for us. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited this morning. Yes, sir. I'm excited this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It have to be in you in order to do it. Amen. The praise got to be in you in order to praise him. Amen. The worship got to be in you in order to worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. For another Pentecostal Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. We celebrate. Amen. Hallelujah. And y'all look mighty good and you're red out there today. Amen. Hallelujah. As we pre- represent. Amen. Pentecostal Sunday, the blood of Jesus, the beginning, amen, of the church, amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. All the glory. Hallelujah. Giving honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Pastor Carter, our First Lady, Reverend Abram, Sister Abram. Hallelujah. Woo, God, like Sister Angie said, I'm excited, y'all. Y'all, I'm excited. I be excited about a lot of things, but Jeff can tell you when it's time to come to the house of the Lord, I get in a rush. <laughs> I get in a rush. Hallelujah. Because I be expecting. I be expecting the overflow. I be expecting things that I hadn't seen before. I be expecting newness. Hallelujah. I be expecting change. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He'll change your heart, your mind. Hallelujah. He'll do a new thing in you. Hallelujah. Giving honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for all that he is doing. And thinking about what he has done. And what he's going to do. Our eyes, our ears have not even seen, begin to even think of what he going to do for us, y'all. If we just hold on, keep the faith, never doubt and trust him. Just look for it, y'all. Look for it. And while you're looking, just praise him. (laughs) Praise him in advance for it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're going to have a song by the male chorus. Put your hands together as they come forth. Amen. Check.
the dead Still opening blinded eyes God still provides Still working miracles Just like before God is still doing What God does God is still doing what God does. Still healing the sick. Still raising the dead. Still raising the dead. Still opening blind. Still opening blind. God is still. God is still provides. Still working. Still working. God is still doing what God does. Cause God is still, God is still doing what God does. He's still making a way out of no way. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, we just come before your holiness. We come before your majesty. We come before your magnificence. We come before your awesomeness. And Lord, we come humbly before your presence. We do realize, Lord, that we are always in your presence. But this morning, this day on Pentecost, we come humbly, we come thankful 
We come to bless you. We come to give you glory. We come to lift you up. We come to exalt you for the many things that you've done for us down through the years. We come to simply say thank you for being God. Thank you, Lord, for sustaining us and keeping us, Lord, all this week and both day and night. You, you watched over us and you kept the enemy at bay. You made the devil behave. Oh, God, we thank you that you spared us, Lord, this week and even to behold another Sabbath day. God, we thank you. We're not taking any of your blessings for granted nor can we count them all but we thank you for every blessing our movement and our being is because of you we can't even breathe without you and God we thank you we praise you for being a mighty God and Lord we ask God that you come now we want to formally and spiritually invite you into our presence today. We know that you're an ever-present God, but we want to respect you and honor you and invite you here at St. Stephen. Lord, we call on your name. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We know that thou art a strong deliverer. We know that you are a liberating God. Know that you are a loving God and God of tender mercy. We, we know that you are a God of grace, God of forgiveness, God that restores, a God that reclaims, a God that revives. We thank you, Lord, for being an immutable God, a God that never changes, who declare in your word, I am the Lord thy God. I, I change not. And Lord, we know that your, your property, your principle is, oh God, to be God in all that you are. Somebody need a touch from you today. Somebody need a visit from you today. Somebody need to be, oh God, lifted up today. Somebody need a release. Some Somebody need a relief today. Somebody need direction. Somebody need hope. And somebody need a restore of joy. Somebody need to be forgiven today. Somebody need the Holy Ghost. Oh God, come be God to us today in the name of the only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ. Come be God today. Not only come to St. Stephen, but go to the prison, jail cells, hospitals, nursing homes. Go under the tree shed. Go where people are, God, in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit be known, God. Change hearts and minds and help them to know, God, that you know them. Just like you know us. We ask for your mercy today. We ask for your blessings today. We ask for your power today to be Christians, believers. Thank you, Lord. All made possible through the one you sent to redeem us. In Jesus' name. Our Lord, we ask now these things to be. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen and Amen. God bless you. We're going to have our scriptures at this time. I read by Evangelist David. If you don't mind, those who can stand, will you stand for the word, the reading of the word? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. The scripture reading is coming from Acts chapter 19, 
verses 1 through 8. Acts chapter 19, 1 through 8. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper, co upper coast, came to Ephesus, Ephesus, excuse me, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And he said unto them, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. And then Paul, John, verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they shall believe on him which shall come after him and is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake in tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. Verse 8, And he went into the synagogues and boldly and spake boldly for the, for the space for three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We now have announcements by uh, Gail Jarvis at this time. Good morning. Please, please tag, like, and share this awesome anointed worship service this morning with your friends and family. Intercessory prayer is every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. via conference call, and our Word Lovers Bible study is every Wednesday via Zoom at 7 o'clock p.m. Okay. The fourth Sunday, okay, if you're here. <laughs> The pastor's appreciation for our own very Pastor Carter will be Sunday, June 11th, doing worship services. Chairpersons, please remind your members of our obligations. This is coming from Sister Freelia Smith, chairperson. Our worship committee is in the process of planning our Father's Day celebration. One of the highlights will be the many men are now yielding to God walk that will be on Saturday, June 17th, 2023, from 8.30 to 10, 10.30 here at the church. This event is for all men and their families to include the community. Breakfast will be served. The event, again, is from 8.30 to 10.30, and we do have registration forms with us this morning, and you can complete those registration forms in the back but you can also go to the website. When you complete the registration forms, please include those you are bringing. If you don't have the exact names, just give us the count. We want to make sure that we have all our keepsakes and necessary breakfast for all of our men and guests. Again, this is on Saturday, June 17th from 8.30 to 10.30. And in case of inclement weather, we will go, be going to the Prince of Orange Mall. The flyers are circulating. If you would like to have any, please let us know, and we will be more than happy to give them to you. So please meet us in the reg um, fellowship hall this morning so that you can complete your registration form. And we do have quite a few men here this morning, so we expect to walk out with quite a few registrations. Amen? Amen. Amen. And women, the deadline for the donation to make sure our Father's Day weekend is a successful event will be Sunday, June 11th and we're asking for a minimum of $5. Please give this to First Lady Carter or to Sister Latrina Holmes. If any young ladies are interested in being a part of the praise team and performing for the Father's Day celebration, please contact Sister Lorraine Fields. She is here this morning. She will begin practicing for that worship service, so please let her know if your child will be interested. VBS, which is Vacation Bible School, will be Wednesday, June 28th through Friday, June 30th, with our culminating activity on Saturday, July 1st. Sister Rachel and Sister Angie are asking all past teachers, interested teachers, and support staff to please meet via Zoom on this coming Tuesday. Believe it or not, June is around the corner. This coming Tuesday at 6 or 6.30, 
6.30? Okay. Uh, so please, all former teachers, interested teachers, supporting staff, please be on at 6.30 on Tuesday. The format, as well as other discussions, will be held at this time. Very important so that we will have a successful vacation Bible school for our children. We are now also registering for Recharge Your Faith, our banquet that will be held for all St. Stephen family and friends. We do have tickets available, and the reason we're starting the tickets at this time is because for registration will begin the first week of June. Reverend Nichols and her committee will be working on registration. The tickets will have stubs so that we will be able to um, register these persons. Those of you who have the popcorn store, we do have registration forms this morning. You can pick those forms up and complete them and return to us by first Sunday, next Sunday. So we do have the registration forms and you will check that you were a popcorn um, store owner and just place your persons at the bottom of the list and return by next Sunday so we can start the registration for those persons. We do have those forms available this morning. And our recognition program has been moved to Sunday, July 9th for members from pre-K through college. The forms are to be submitted by the end of the month to either Sister Angie or myself or give directly to the ushers. Again, we do have those forms this morning as well if you do need to complete for student recognition. Happy birthday to all born in the month of May. Please remember to keep all sick and shut in and those in bereavement in prayer. Please continue to keep Sister Lily Hibbler and her brother James Mack in prayer. At this time, we will change our um, direction. As you know, tomorrow is Memorial Day. The purpose of Memorial Day is to recognize soldiers who lost their lives due to doing duty in the line of duty or for those who lost their lives suffering from an injury in the line of duty. Our Memorial Day are for our fallen soldiers. At this time, we will have Ms. Tracy Green, who is a veteran, to come up and talk about the poppy flower, which is the Fisher flower of Memorial Day. Brother Joseph Pepper will do a poem, who is another veteran, and Mr. Michael Myers, a veteran, will talk about our own beloved fallen soldier, Mr. Vaughn Mack. Afterwards, Pastor Carter will come up with his verse of reference and a moment of solace. So please direct your attention to our true veterans and all of our veterans here, but they will be doing this in honor of our fallen soldiers. At this time, Ms. Tracy Green. And Ms. Tracy, as you come, to the St. Stephen family, the Floyd family, would like to thank everyone for their love and support shown to us. It's all greatly appreciated. We would like to extend a special thanks to Pastor and First Lady Carter, the Myers family and the Holmes family. It was deeply appreciated. And this is coming from Mr. and Mrs. Desi Floyd. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good morning. I will be talking briefly about Memorial Day and how the poppy flower became a part of Memorial Day. For all the lighthearted fun aspects of Memorial Day, the holiday is also a lot more than just cookouts, trips to the beach. Those are plenty important, but above all else, the federal holiday is about commemorating the millions of brave Americans who gave their lives defending the values of our country was founded on. As John F. Kennedy said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget the highest appreci appreciation is not to utter the words, but to live by them. In the past century, red poppies became the symbol to represent the ultimate sacrifice. It symbolizes the, the memory of fallen soldiers and it acts as the way of keeping our attention on the most important part of the holiday. Two inspiration, inspirational and dedicated women, French lecturer Anna Gerlin, American teacher Mona Michael, campaigned over many years 
with their supporters for the symbolic red flower to be means for raising funds for those suffering as a result of the war, most especially returning servicemen and women, orphan children, and those who were displaced in devastated regions. Now, nearly a hundred years later, in a billion dollars, the poppy has become the international symbol of remembrance and support of all military veterans. Thanks to their tireless effort of Mona Bella, Michael, affectionately known as the Papa Lady, the Poppy Lady. Thank you. Go out and celebrate tomorrow, but remember the most important part of Memorial Day. Thank you. Good morning. I'll be reading a poem called In Flanders Field in recognition of all of our fallen soldiers. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce hair amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrels with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Good morning, family. Good morning. Uh, I've been given the distinct um, opportunity to stand and talk about one of our fallen uh, PFC sergeant. PFC born Mac, and if you wouldn't mind, I see her. Uh, his aunt is out in the back, my cousin Lily, and she would like to come up for a moment and stand with me while I read a little skit on her. We just wanted to honor her nephew, um, Army PFC Vaughn Mack, who died August 23rd, 2003, while serving uh, in op Operation Iraqi Freedom. At age 19, and from Orangeburg, South Carolina, assigned to the 3rd Army Cavalry Regiment at Fort Carson, Colorado, the PFC Vaughn Mack was roughly five foot three inches, 115 pounds, when Sergeant Andre Bola saw him for the first time at Fort Carson in March. I thought he was someone's little brother. He was so young and little, Bola said, but that made no difference. He was a great soldier. Mac often would cheer up the soldiers with a cigarette or a story. The 19-year-old died on August 23, 2003. He was a computer analyst, and um, he began his basic training one month before graduation from high school. His aunt, Brenda Brick, said he was one of five children and one sister who was in the Army in Kuwait. He was a little man with a big heart, she said. He leaves to mourn his parents, Jimmy and Sharon, Mac. May he rest in peace. Thank you. 
thanks to all who have come before us to remind us of uh, an important day in the lives of so many. Many that are yet alive that have served and many that have gone on. Thank you for the poem of Flanders Field. Thank you for reminding us us uh, this green of the poppy flower. And to one uh, our one, uh, family member, uh, Vaughn Mack, so young. Life is precious, but it's also a sacrifice as well as we serve uh, our nation and serve one another. We are all in the army of the Lord. We are all in service, but we do lift up those who have, were brave and are brave to serve in such a way. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for the gift of life. And we thank you, Lord, for those who were brave enough to join the armed service to serve this nation and serve the people thereof. We thank you, Lord, for their heart, their minds, and their sacrifices, the ultimate sacrifice of their lives. We lift up the Mack family and, and all family that have lost loved ones one way or another, but especially those who have served in the armed forces in whatever capacity we lift them up. We remind ourselves of those who, oh God, are willing and committed even to death. We ask for your presence to be with us always to remind us how sacred life is, how precious life is, that you will help us to remind ourselves that as we walk in the army of the Lord, that we will remind ourselves of the armed forces of this nation, that those are walking danger. We, pr we ask for your protection over families and those who have family members that are serving even now. Be a shield and a buckler for them. Throw your loving arms around families that have lost loved ones in the armed services and those of us who have lo lost loved ones one way or another. Lord, your arms are long enough, loving enough to keep all of us. Thank you now for this memorial. We ask that as we celebrate, that we just pause a moment to pray for those that have gone on. Hear us now and thank you Jesus' name, amen. We are down to uh, our tithe and our offering at this time. And let us be reminded of the fact that God loves uh, a cheerful giver. And give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Run it over. Should people give? to you, but with the same measure you give, you stingy, you, you might as well look for stingy people to give to you, amen, but if you cheerful, you give in an abundant way, God will cause you to reap what you sow. Amen. Those of us who have an envelope and those who don't, that's okay. Those who've already given, God bless you. Those who don't have to give, God bless you. God is able to provide. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for allowing us to have and to realize that we didn't gain anything by our own might or power but by yours, for you give us the strength, amen. 
to receive, to be blessed. You give us the might and power. Thank you, Lord, for giving to us, and we now give just a little bit back to you. Bless it real good, Lord, and help us to remind ourselves of how good you are. And thank you, Lord, to be able to give to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're now, uh, now ready for another song from the mighty men of St. Steve. Amen. At this time. Bible declares in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. It says the old has gone and the new has come. How many of y'all are glad to be in the army of the Lord? A new creation. All your past is behind you. Talk. You got a new talk. New talk. You got a new talk. New talk. 
talk. Lord gave you a new tongue. New talk. He put a new word in your spirit. New talk. How to talk to your friends. New talk. How to love your neighbor. New talk. We got a new tongue. New talk. Thank you, got a new tongue. New talk. We got a new walk. New walk. We got a new walk. New walk. We got a new walk. Anybody here got a new walk? 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 Has the Lord changed your 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 walk? Anybody here want a new walk? Anybody here want a new walk? Have you got a new walk? Have you got a new walk? Have you got a new walk? You no longer walk the same since Jesus came in your life. You no longer talk the same since Jesus came in your life. You no longer mistreat your neighbor. You no longer mistreat your friend. You know how to love. You know how to love. You know how to love. You love with all your heart. God is nothing but love. My God is nothing but love. Said my God is the truth. His word shall not return. Return to him, boy. He got a new walk. He gave us a new walk. He gave us a new walk. Are you glad that he gave you a new walk? I've got a new way of living, yeah. Jesus came into my life. New way of giving, yeah. Since Jesus came into my life. New way of talking, yeah. Since Jesus came into my life.
Yeah, man, y'all sounding real good. Y'all playing real good. That's some good music there now. scripture today comes out of Zechariah chapter 4. There's several scriptures, but I'm just going to read that one. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 1 through 7. Amen. It's about six minutes after 11. Amen. I'm going to be finished by 11.30. I set a goal for myself. I may not reach it, but I'm going to try my best. Amen. And that does not include me reading the scripture. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 4, verse 1, out of the King James Version, says, And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is waking out of his sleep and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick out of a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. And so I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me saying what are these my lord then the angel that talked with me answered 
and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. And then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with, with shoutings and crying, Grace, grace unto it. Thus ends the reading of that particular scripture. Let me share something out of Joel 2 and 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, verse 29, and, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. The word of God for the people of God. And we say thanks be to God. I want to use for a subject, amen, for about 23 minutes. By the power of the Spirit. By the power of the Spirit. We're, we're currently living in a time where people are denying the power of the Lord, the, in the power of God in their lives. Amen. We, we have, uh, uh, the society have predicated themselves uh, on developed systems to live by, developed by hum humanity. We have predicated our lives, many people, on developed systems of humanity, and many are relying on visible existing powers that be of humankind believing that those powers are their sustaining power that keeps them alive and keeps them uh, in the know and keeps them uh, continuing to live, amen, a, a, an abundant life or a, a, a fruitful life. But uh, these uh, visible existing powers uh, have no match, amen, for the power that really exists. Amen. Uh, sometimes we think as people we have uh, our own powers that can change our own lives. Amen. Even among the contemporary church, uh, there are people who are denying the power of God. Amen. Amen. The Bible lets us know in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6, this says that in the last days people will have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Amen. Amen. In other words, many are presenting a counterfeit power in the church. Amen. And, and God does not work with counterfeit powers or counterfeit anything or any kind of facade, amen, that is not relevant unto him, amen. And so God does not deal with counterfeit powers, and, and he does not accept that in his kingdom, nor does he work with it, amen. Anything that simply think that it is the power, especially in his church, or let's say the church, amen. In Acts chapter 4, verses 6 through 18, the Sanhedrin court, were, they were the, uh, the, the, the declared power of the day that they made decisions for the religion. Amen. But a new power came. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, a, a new church, a new movement of God came. Amen. And they were in the way. Amen. Of the movement of God. Praise God. And, 
and s oh, I don't want to get ahead of my time. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, and, and and sometimes we uh, we uh, we we act like, and I say we as in the church, the generality of the church. Sometimes we uh, we act like the Sanhedrin court. We are in the way. Amen, 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 and and and, and not only that, but uh, the power of legalism, amen, uh, can be a counterfeit power. Uh, Colossians two and verse twenty one talks about touch not, taste not, handle not, and we think in the positive about that uh, because that's what we do. We came out of the world. We touch not, taste not, handle not anything anymore. But that's not what Colossians was about. It was about legalism. Don't, 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 don't do nothing. And it prevented the spiritual movement of the church. There, there was a counterfeit uh, power that's called traditionalism. Jesus says uh, in Mark chapter 7, verse 8, laying aside the commandment of God, holding tradition, the tradition of men or people. That's, that's counterfeit power. Counterfeit power. Counterfeit power is uh, liberalism. You know, I could, we could do anything we want to do. You know. It's counterfeit power. And, 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 and this kind of power is in society. In other words, Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that seems to be right. Amen. But in the end, it is death. See, uh, th th this way is liberalism. It's, we can do and accept anything. Amen. It's, and even in the church. There's a counterfeit power uh, that exists uh, in uh, the contemporary church, and it's called professionalism. Uh, professionalism is 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 the orderly, uh, high-minded, uh, dignified, uh, sophisticated for God. Oh God! Paul said that every person should not think more highly of him or herself than he or she ought to think. Romans twelve and three is, and sometimes. Professionalism can come into the church which produces pride and God resists pride and when you have too much pride that means you don't have enough Holy Ghost operating in your spiritual life. And then finally there is the counterfeit of, of philosophicalism. Y'all know I can make up words. Yeah, preachers got a preacher's dictionary. <laughs> Philosophicalism is the is the ideologies uh, uh, and about vain deceit and and in and in and embracing and including the rudiments of the world. Amen. And and we have allowed in some ways philosophical views to dictate to the church as a power. Oh, as a direction yes. that we ought to go. Folk thinking better than, they think they're thinking better than God. Yes. 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 As to the direction of where God wants the church to go and to be. And, and so it, it is a deceit to think so yes. to your own self. In reality, all of this is powerless to the power of God. I'm going to get on down the road here with you. Uh, it is. It is. It has no power in comparison to the power of God. Amen. Uh, I, I can't leave our dogmaticism. Amen. Uh, it's dogmaticism is an opinion or a suggestion that has not been proven. It's your own fault about it. I think. You know what I think. It's, that's all it is. It's not a a proven fact about it. Amen. Zechariah in the 6th century uh, 
was a prophet of God, and God gave him a vision. Uh, and the vision had within it symbolisms, and the symbolisms represented the order and the power of God at work in heaven, at work on earth, and at work in people. The symbolism uh, presented the order of God, how God ordered heaven, how he works in heaven, how he works on earth, and how he works in people. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. Therefore, if he is, since he is a spirit, he works by his spirit. Sometimes we have a difficult time uh, understanding that. If we are to, if we're going to work, uh, going to work with God, we must work with God. We're going to do the work of God. We must work with God. Not only must we work with God, but we must work by the spirit of God. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. And God told Zechariah how he does things. Amen. The Bible says the angel came and talked to him and woke him up. Amen. And began, amen, to ask him some things about the vision he saw and the uh, angel began to explain this thing to Zechariah, amen. Yeah. And, and God told Zechariah by the angel uh, how he does things, it's not by might, not by the might of people, not by the power of people, but by the power of my spirit, amen. That's how God does things. Church people uh, don't believe that, amen. Many don't. Let me hurry up, man. I got a few more minutes here. The first thing I want us to understand out of this particular text is God, through the angel and through vision, spoke to Zechariah for our understanding. And the, and, and the first thing I want us to understand is the Spirit of the Lord gives understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. I might be going to cheat myself out of a good sermon here, trying to tie myself, but, but if I go over, I go over. If I, if I go over, I ain't gonna charge y'all nothing. I, I work overtime for free. The Spirit of the Lord gives understanding. The angel of the Lord gave Zechariah a vision and asked him what it was. And Zechariah did not understand what he saw. Therefore, the angel of the Lord had to explain the vision. Sometimes God people think they know stuff. And, and, and may I be brave enough and bold enough to say that we don't know nothing unless the Lord helps us understand that which we think we know. Amen. Real revelation comes from the Lord. And, and, and many are dependent on intellectual insight for the revelation of things of God. Amen. You can't think. Amen. Revelation without God. You can't think about spiritual things without spiritual involvement. You can't know God without knowing the spirit of God. You can't know the things of God without God being involved in it. Uh, too many people are trying to know God without the spirit of God. Amen. Been there, done that. Amen. Praise God. Many, many, many are dependent on the educational edification. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Mom, mom, mom. Which hinges on history and not future. Education teaches history, but the Holy Ghost teaches future. Get it back up. Stay over there now. Praise God. Uh, many, many, even in society, not in the church, even in society, many are dependent on the enchanters for revelation, stargazers, soothsayers, palm readers uh, for their revelation, sorcerers, divinations, psychics. 
for the revelation of their lives. They want to know from the devil what's a he. Devil ain't gonna never tell you nothing good. He'll trick you. He'll tell you you're gonna marry a good looking, tall, dark, and handsome man. It never happened. Don't, don't listen to that. Amen. Nevertheless, the things of God comes from the Spirit of God. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. That's how you get revelation. In the Spirit. Amen. The Apostle Paul explained to the Roman believers the work of the Spirit. He says the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. You're going to deal with God. You've got to have Holy Ghost invasion. Right. Amen. Right. Praise God. The Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. I'm just giving you a Bible. Because the church don't want to deal with that. All the church want to do is be churchy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We're so involved in programmatic praise, God, that we miss the revelations of God because we are absence of the Spirit's power working in our lives. We are what's next, preacher? But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's why a lot of folk, and I use the word cautiously, it is not to be demeaning nor derogative, uh, but the Bible uses the word ignorant. It, it's, y'all know, I told y'all before what ignorant meant 50 years ago. Amen. That, that's not what I'm talking about. If you don't know, you don't know. That means you're ignorant of it. Amen. The natural man is ignorant of the spirit of the Lord. Can't think spiritually because there ain't nothing in him to make him think that way. Many of us were, we were ignorant. Amen. We didn't think, you know, many of us come to church. Oh, help me. Help me, God. Many of us came to church just to come. Amen. Let me move on now. The Holy Ghost trying to get me to say something. I'm trying to be careful. Well, one of the hindrances of the contemporary church is, to, is due to the absence of spiritual understanding. Amen. And, and the absence of spiritual understanding is ignoring spiritual revelation. The church don't want to know nothing about what God says. They want to know about who shot John. What they doing down the street? You know? What happened last night at the club? Did you hear that? Huh? The Bible says, he that has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the church. Revelation 2 and 7, in other words, the power of the Spirit speaks. Amen. The Lord is talking to you and I right now. Is is I, I had a hard time hearing God. And one of the reasons we had, I had a hard time hearing God is because I had too many other voices in my ear. Not in my head, in my ear. And too many people are letting too many people talk to them rather than be still and hear the Lord, praise God. You have to train yourself to hear God. Yeah, yeah, I thought I was listening to God just because I was reading the word, but God, he had to show my stupid self that you making mistakes is because you don't hear what I'm trying to tell you. The reason you keep failing, the reason you're not successful, the reason you're not where you need to be is because you're not listening to me. Somebody said, well, Reverend, how does the Lord talk to you? How... I, can I hear him? Yeah, you can hear the Lord when he talks to you in your voice. 
Uh-huh. You're not going to hear him. You can't stand his. Praise God. He talks to us through us. Amen. And that's why I walk around talking to myself. People think I'm talking to myself, but they, uh, I'm talking back. Uh-huh. This, this might be too much for some of y'all, but, you know, uh, that's, that's how the spirit, the spirit speaks. We, we just don't want to hear it. Cut your cell phone off. Mm, I'm going to get on your nerves, okay? You, you listen to too much on the, you know, social media. They're talking louder than the church. Amen. In reality, the Spirit speaks. John 16 and 13. The Spirit shall not speak of himself, uh, but, and, but what, whatsoever he, he hear, he should speak. Jesus is saying, what I tell him, he'll tell you. There, there's an order. Amen. God, Jesus, Holy Ghost. There's an order, Amen. Jesus is saying to the disciples, when I tell him to tell you, listen. Second thing, praise God. Amen. The, the, the spirit is God's working power. You, you can't get spiritual understanding without being spiritual. Get there. Praise God. Many of us don't want it. We're too much. We're too proud. We're too, I, it don't take over. If you're going to be a Christian, it take all of that. If you're going to win the battles in your life, it takes all of that. If you're going to fight the devil, and if the devil fights you, it takes all of that. If you're going to hush your haters, it's going to take all of that. Praise God. If you're going to keep your stamina up about yourself as a believer, it's going to take all of that. Praise God. If you're going to learn how to ignore gossip, it's going to take all of that. If you can't take talk, you need some more of all of that. It's going to take all of that. Praise God. And so, it takes all of that. The reason why we some of us can't get over an ant hill because we need more power to do it. Amen. The Spirit of God is working power. It's a working power. It's a working power. Amen. The word is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Is God is saying, my spirit is the working power. Amen. The working power. And these words give implication that, you know, God is at work. God can be at work in the believer's life by the power, amen, the real power on earth. Amen. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is the real power on earth. Amen. His spirit can change things on earth and causes change in people. And causes change in situations. The Spirit of the Lord can do that. Praise God. His Spirit causes changes in situations. And it can cause changes in the church. If you're not changing. If a church is not changing. If you're not changing. If your situations are not changing. If your circumstances are changing. You're blocking God's power from the change. Praise God. You know, many of us can go back and, and remind ourselves how far out we were out there in the world. We need a change. We needed a change. Uh, we still need change. Amen. Some of us, all of us, actually still need the power to work that change in us. There's some stuff you dealing with and I'm dealing with that we need power help. Holy Ghost power. You need change to stop talking about people. Yeah, y'all ain't gonna have, y'all can't handle that. <laughs> Condemning people and judging folk. All of us is in the same boat. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. 
You got to have the power working in you. Praise God. I've been changed. Amen. I've really been changed. I, I, I know my time almost, almost. I got a lot of almosts today. I've been changed. Amen. And I know there's some folk out there have been changed. I'm going to get to the end in a minute. Praise God. The Lord had to change me. Praise God. Man, I tell you what, I was, man, I know I know, I ain't the worst thing on earth now. I know there's some bad people out here. I know some folk have been worse off than me. Praise God. But I know where I've been. I know what I used to do. Praise God. Can I talk to somebody? I, I know how wild I was. Amen. Can I talk to anybody up in here? I know what time I used to come home at night. Amen. I, I know when I got off on Friday, I, I start with a pint. Y'all ain't want to talk now. <laughs> I said I start off with that. Around about 2 o'clock, I've been coming home, baby. <laughs> oh, y'all don't want to deal with that. <laughs> I needed change, and I couldn't do it myself. God, let me move on, praise God. Uh, the Spirit will change you. The Bible tells us that uh, it, it was the spirit of the Lord that came upon King Saul, and it turned him into another man. First Samuel 10 and 6, praise God. When the prophet Samuel anointed David, the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. First Samuel 16 and 13, praise God. I'm here to tell you that the spirit of the Lord has a power in it, is a power, amen, that can work in a believer's life that will change the believer, praise God. And as we heard the song, where I used to go, the praises I used to go, I don't go anymore. The things I used to say, I don't say anymore. The people who I used to cuss out. There's still some folk I want to cuss out. I ain't lying. I, want, I still want to cuss some people out. I don't think I don't want to. I got, oh, help me. And, and when I feel like it, I have to ask God, oh, help me. Holy Ghost. Good God of mine. There's still some folk I want to say some stuff to. Some aggravating folk. Some folk who will get on your nerves. Some mean folk, conniving, tithing, manipulating folk, folk who want to hurt you. Yeah, I want to cuss them out. But I got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, praise God. Tell me to hold up, Carter. Because if you cuss them out, they're going to have something to talk about. That old preacher down there. He cussed me out. He ain't no Christian. But the devil is a liar. God of my I know he working on y'all too. Trying to get you to cuss out somebody. Right now. Some of y'all got a list. You got a list. You got Y'all better get rid of that list. The devil will give you a list. I'm going to get her. Ain't going to get away with that. When Jesus came out of the wilderness for 40 days, after 40 days and 40 nights, praise God, the spirit of the Lord was upon him. He said, the spirit of the Lord, the power of God is on me. Why? To do the work of God. You can't do it without him. Evidently, we can conclude then that that any work of God, any work of God, any work of God, a lot of young people don't understand this, and old folk. If you're going to do the work of God, you better have the Spirit of the Lord in it. The, the Spirit will hold you and keep you in the work. Praise God. It, it, it'll help you do what God has designed you to do and gifted you to do and blessed you to do. Praise God. The Spirit of the Lord, praise God, won't allow you to run from the enemy. That's right. That's right. Uh, it won't let you be chased off. The Spirit of the Lord will give you power to take stuff uh -huh. off 
people. Praise God. That's, that's, I'm, I'm going to finish now. I'm, I'm about three minutes over now. But listen, this is spirit of the, listen, church people are weak people because they don't want to deal with the power of the Lord. You, a carnal Christian can't take nothing. Too thin skinned. Praise God. They can't take talk. Talk about me. I don't care. You can't. Your talk don't bother me. Praise God. I've been talk about long time. They've been talking about me. So ever since I was, I could have been talking about. Praise God. Boy, I tell you what, I wish I could take y'all way back. Take y'all about, about, about 50 years back. Oh, let me move on. Praise God. They've been talking about me. Y'all know that kind of boy, that kind of boy. Yeah. But see what the Lord has done. Praise God. And the Spirit is the working power in everybody. After Jesus' resurrection, he told the disciples, as my Father has sent me, so I send you. My Father sent me, I'm going to send you. I will send you. My Father sent me, I'm going to send you. And he, then he said, uh, he said this, he says, uh, after he said that, he, he breathed. He breathed on them. The Bible says he breathed on them. And then he said, receive. Hey, let me tell you something. You can't get the Holy Ghost from people. God got to breathe on you. Hey, I'm telling you, you can't get it from the preacher. You can't get it from other spiritual people because they got it from God. Praise God. Let the Lord. He said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Re receive. Praise God. John 20 and verse 21 and 22. Receive, invite, abide with. Take him with you. Let him lead you. Listen to what he says. Receive the guiding power in your life. Praise God. Many of us are walking blind because we don't have spiritual guidance. Amen. And the devil, if you, if, you don't, if you can't see spiritually, the devil will lead you into traps. Stuff you don't want to be around. Stuff you don't need to be in. Amen. If you can't see spiritually, he'll cause you to see stuff you used to see. I wish I had time to talk about all that. Stuff you used to see. Stuff that used to excite you. Yo, I can't deal it. I can't deal with it this morning. But you know, the devil will cause you to look at stuff you stop looking at. You need spiritual, you need spiritual insight to say, you know what? I see you setting me up. The significance of this divine act is the implication don't go without the spirit of the Lord. Amen. That's what Jesus was saying to them. Don't you go. Amen. That's why he says, go wait. Amen. Wait for the baptism of it. They received it. He said, now go wait for the baptism of it. In, you know, in Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. And, and, and uh, let me pause. Here. Can I pause here for a minute? Let me say that. I'm going to get out your way in a minute. Praise God. I ain't charging y'all nothing. Uh, look, um, you know, I, I was, I got saved. I got born again. I was, I love the Lord. I, I received Jesus Christ in my heart. I, I loved him, praise God. But I yearned for more. I, I yearned for more. I wanted more than church. I, I was going to church, but that, I, I, hey, there was more. There's more to this. It's, it's just more than just coming to church on Sunday morning. So I said, Lord, I, I want more. I want more of you. I, I, need, I need an invasion. I need, I, I, I confess, and, and I believe I was spiritually born again, but I needed more power.
power to be what I wanted to be. Praise God. And, and so I began to yearn. And I, in my spirit, began to pray to God. Praise God. I need more. I said my spirit began to pray. Lord, give me more of you. Hey, hey, hey. I said, Lord, I need more of you. And then a prophet came to me and said, the Lord going to visit you in a few days. I'm telling you the truth, praise God. And, 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 and one Tuesday morning, I was sitting in my house, praise God, and a strange spirit uh, descended upon me, praise God. And I felt the warmth of God. I felt the presence of God in my heart, praise God. And it took over me. I not talk to anybody. Wasn't nobody in the house but me. But I began to speak in tongues. I began to have an invasion from the Holy Ghost. Something happened to me. Something happened on the inside. And I wasn't the same ever since. And I tell you, if you submit yourself to God, some of us are too proud, too big, too bold, too bad, too much to submit themselves. You worry about what people are going to say. You need this power. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. Yeah, this, this United Methodist preacher got baptized in the spirit of the Lord. I want to tell you, it works. It is a power. It, it is an empowerment. Get your good looking, pretty, fine, sexy, I'm somebody self out the way. So God can get in your way. God ain't gonna get in your way when you in your own way. All believers, do you believe you have received the Holy Spirit? Now let God do the rest. Praise God. Receive is how we get it. Amen. Last thing. Amen. I want to tell us, and I'm going. By the Spirit's power, mountains can be moved. Remember, in the last days, we're in it. The Lord says, I'm going to pour out my Spirit on all you included. If, if, if don't don't exclude yourself. You included. You better take this literally. You are included in the pouring. Praise God. God has not left you out. He said, upon young young people, don't think God don't want to fill you. Don't don't be talking about I got a little more to do. I, I used to say the same thing. Kenneth, you gonna get saved? Not yet. I got a few more things. I ain't finished doing what I want to do. But they never left, they never stop asking me, when you gonna get saved? Praise God. And so the Lord will pour out the spirit on young men and women, old and young. Praise God. He pours out his spirit. So the spirit power moves mountain. You need that to move the mountains in your way. The question by the angel, uh, who are you, was a question in reference to uh, a, a king. Who are you, O great mountain, is how uh, the angel mentioned it. Who art thou, O great mountain? before Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the king of Jerusalem. Thou shalt become a plain. In other words, the angel was, was saying to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, the, to Zerubbabel and to the people of God, my spirit can move mountains. Amen. The mountain in this episode is the king of Medo, uh, Medo Persian Empire. His name was King High stapes or high stapes. I want to call him King High Step, but that ain't his name. 
And the reason why I want to call him King High Step because he thought he could high step over God. Amen. The king had a decree that no temple should be built in Jerusalem. I'm almost finished. I'm doing pretty fair now. Uh, it, it, no temple can be built in Jerusalem. You can't build it. That's what the king um, of the Medo Persian Empire was telling, amen, the king of Jerusalem, Z Zerubbabel. Amen. You can't do it. You better not do it. You do it, I'm going to invade you. In, in reality, the king thought that, uh, that his decree would prevent what God wanted done. Praise God. He thought that he was in power of himself, of his kingdom, and the kingdom of God. Praise God. Many today, praise God, have this same mindset, believing that they can prevent God at work. Uh-huh. I'm almost finished. Praise God. Uh, the king, King Hystapes, had, a, had military power, and he thought that this power be, would be sufficient against the power of God's spirit. Amen. Flesh against spirit. Who going to win that battle? Amen. High step was uh, uh, called a mountain, a great mountain, amen, by the angel. Amen. And that great mountain had to be moved so that the work of God could be done. Amen. Even today, there are mountains to be moved so that the work of God can be done. There are some mountains in our way that's preventing the work of God. Amen. Hastapes was uh, a great mountain due to his political authority. And, and, and Nevertheless, his presence will be no contest with the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to finish. Listen, the Spirit of God has a spirit. We're talking about Pentecost. See, let me tell you this. Uh, some people think the Holy Ghost is a personal trophy. They, they love to brag about, I got the, I got the Holy Ghost. And they make it a personal trophy for them. But the Holy Spirit is not a trophy to be braggadocious about it or to, to, just to claim it. The Holy Spirit is a power that works in the believer so that they can accomplish some things that God wants them to do. Praise God. It ain't no trophy. Everybody can talk about I got the Holy Ghost. But what is the Holy Ghost doing in you? What is the Holy Spirit causing you to do? Is it causing you to be a witness? Is it causing you to exalt the Lord? Is it causing you to fight your battles? Is it helping you defeat the enemy? Is it helping you running off the devils and the demons in your life? He comes to do a work. Praise God. Uh, just having him, is, is, that's, that's, that's not the achievement of God. Praise God. And so the Spirit of the Lord, um, um, listen, there, there, are no th there are nothing uh, that can contest the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, and some people, oh, let me finish. The Spirit of God has experience in moving things in place and out of place. Y'all hear me? He can move you in place and out of place. Boy, I tell you what, my time gone. I can talk about that. Praise God. I've seen, seen the Lord move people in place and out of place. Praise God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, it says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the Spirit, in other words, was causing order. Genesis 1, verse 2. I'm just teaching a little bit. Praise God. Causing order. You, you can't have order without the spirit. The question to the king of Medo Persian, who are you, indicates that the king's opposition was no match for the spirit of God 
Sometimes we think we can match up with, with the power of God. God is so gracious. If God was an Old Testament God in the New Testament, it won't be nothing but the 12 disciples. But he's merciful because he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus full of grace and truth. And he sent a lot of mercy with Jesus. And we are under the blood covenant with Jesus. And, and, and God is patient with us. That's why a lot of us still living. Uh, I'm finished. Listen, unfortunately, many believe that their plots, plans, and programs against God can match the spirit of the Lord. Let me say it again. Plots, plans, and programs. Uh-huh. You can't match God's spirit. The, we, listen, when Peter and John were, they, were, they performed a, an amazing miracle, the captain of the temples and the priests and the Sadducees came to them and asked them, by what power or did you do this? By what name have you done this? And scripture tells us that Peter, being filled with the Holy Spirit, explained how. Acts chapter 4, verse 7 through 12, in the name of Jesus and the work of the Holy Spirit is how God work. If you want mountain move, you got to have the Holy Ghost and you got to have the name of Jesus. The Spirit's power can move mountains that prevent the move of God. And even if it's a system of religion designed for God, but does not allow the movement of God, y'all hear me now, uh, to happen, God can move the system out the way. I'm, I'm going to say it again. I said, if, even if there is a religious system designed for God, but will not allow the movement of God, he can move the whole system. When the, when, when the apostle Paul was preventing the spread of the church, the Lord had to stop him, stop him, convert him, and fill him with the Holy Spirit. When Simon the sorcerer had bewitched the people, he saw the power that they were operating in. He wanted to buy the power, purchase this power, but they told him, you will perish with your money. That tells you money, amen, ain't the power that runs the church. God almighty. Uh, they, they, he's, they, they told him, they told the soldier, your heart ain't right in the sight of God. You, you are of a gall of bitterness and you're bound in iniquity, praise God. And that's what's wrong with a whole lot of folk, amen, in the church, praise God. They, 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 they heart ain't right. Uh, they're full of gall and bitterness and they're bound in iniquity because they won't use the power. They ain't care nothing about no power. All they want is four consecrated walls of the church. But the church, amen, is more than the church. It's, 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 the church is a power, amen, utilized by the Holy Ghost. All of God's people ought to be Holy Ghost filled. All of us got to be born again. Praise God. All of us, praise God, ought to function by the power of God. And when we do that, we won't be so mad and evil and angry at each other. Praise God. And we'll be happy and thinking about all the good of God and not the bad of God. And we won't be whiners and complainers. Praise God. We'll see you and beg God to move in the midst of us. Praise God. You'll see healing going on. Praise God. Ain't no way in the world God can be in something that ain't nothing happening. If God in it, something got to happen. If the spirit of the Lord is in the house, change got to happen. You can't stay the same if you got the Holy Ghost working on the inside. You ought to have some change in you. There got to be betterment, improvement. God is not a God of stagnation. Praise God. He ain't lazy. God is a doing God. He's a working God. He's a creative God. He does new things. God is still doing what God does. Hey, we ought to catch a hold of that. The church moved by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit spread at the church. Not Paul them, but the Holy Ghost led them. Talked to them. 
taught them, guided them, lifted them, got them out of trouble, helped them, praise God, fed them. That's what the Spirit of the Lord will do. It'll help you do right. Praise God. With, with the Spirit of power, we can overcome wrong motives and confused spirit and controversial spirit and demonic spirit. We can run the devil out the church, out your house, out your community, out of town. All churches can do that. We put God back in the center of things. Allow the Holy Ghost to be an active power in your life. It behooves believers to be spirit-filled. Don't be empty. Paul said, be filled with the Spirit. Praise God. Some of us, amen, we've been dead so long, we need a living spirit in us. Yeah. Some of us, oh, Jesus. Some of us been dead so long, the devil trying to keep you dead. Come to church day. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us leave day. Why? Because you just you satisfied just being in the consecrated wall. You ain't looking for nothing. You better look for him. The Bible says, seek the Lord. Praise God. You want some mountain move? Be spiritual. Rebellion. Got to go. Stubborn spirits got to go. Pride is a mountain. Self-righteousness is a mountain. Self-will is a mountain in your way. Amen. Procrastination, hesitation, sitting around doing nothing and talking about nothing. Got the devil sitting around your table. He keeping you doing nothing. Fear is a mountain. Faithlessness is a mountain. Hopelessness is a mountain. Amen. And everything that come up against you in the word of God and in your heart, amen, as a believer, are mountains. But the writer tells us in Zechariah, praise God, that by my spirit, says the Lord, I can move your mountain. And so, I'm finished. That's why the Spirit came. It came to empower believers to overcome every obstacle in their life. And that's why you ought to keep praying to God and to stay with God and to beg God and to submit to God and to give your heart to God, give your life to God, and to talk to God every day. And, and, and walk around the house talking to God. Walk in the yard with me. Drive in your car talking to God. Okay, God, what is it? What, what you want me to do today? What is it? What you want me to do? Okay, do I need to go that way? Do, can I say this? Do I need to talk to her, him, or whoever? Praise God. What you want me to do? What I need to pray about today? What I need today? You got to talk to God. Praise God. Come on, brothers. Y'all got a song for us? Praise God. Because everything moves by the power of the Lord. Been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Born with the pride. Born with the pride. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Born with the pride. Born with the pride. If anybody asks you, if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? What's the matter with me? Tell them that I'm saved, sanctified. Tell them that I feel, I feel alright. I've been reading. You tell them. I've been reading. I've been reading. I've been reading. Born with the 
bride. Born with a price. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Born with a price. Born with a price. If anybody asks, if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? What's the matter with me?
others. It's prayer time. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. You pray as I pray and ask God for the things that you need in your life. Ask him for more power to be a believer. God is benevolent. Amen. He says you receive that because you ask not. He, he wants to give it. He wants to give you what you need. And I declare unto you, people, I declare, hallelujah, that if you allow the Holy Spirit to have latitude in your life, include him in your daily living. Let him talk to you and you talk to him. Praise God. Watch Watch how he guides. Ah, he'll help you. The Bible says he's a helper. He's a comforter. He's a keeper. I know he is. He kept his old poor country boy. When all else failed and everybody walked away, ah, I had. Father, we just, hallelujah, we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, the power you sent on earth, so that we can receive it and be believers, people with power. Thank you, Lord, for empowering us to be the church. For we can do nothing without you. And Lord, we, we need you. Even in times that we are experiencing perilous times, we need you now more than ever before. We need your power, the Spirit of the Lord in our lives. Oh God, we need your Spirit to teach us what's right us what's wrong. Keep us from evil. Keep us, Lord, in the pathway of righteousness for thy name's sake. To help us walk through the many valleys of life. Empower us today. Help us to be submissive to your spirit. Help us to know and sense your power in our lives. Tear down what need not be in us. Purge us. Help us to get rid of things that may be blocking the work of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, humble us day, hallelujah, by day. Oh God, keep us from wrong keep wrong out of us. And then, Lord, help us to love ye one another. We need you to help us do that. Help us to forgive one another. Bind us together. Help us to be on one accord. That's where you work, God. Hey, God, in the name of Jesus, give us one mind toward you. One spirit toward you. One baptism from you. So we can do the work of the Lord. You're coming. You're coming again. We want to be ready when you come. Somebody want to be saved today. Somebody want to change today. In the name of Jesus. Lord, this is what it's all about. Save a soul today. In fact, save many souls. Change many lives. Change ours. Oh God, so that we can be your people. Hear us now and heal, help, and deliver today. 
Jesus' name we pray and ask now these things. Amen. There might be someone today that wants to join this church today. We want to invite you to be a part of this church family today. Is there anyone who would like to join this church? Anybody want to get saved today? You have not confessed to the Lord with your mouth and believe in your heart. God raised Jesus from the dead. We want to offer you that opportunity to come and do just that. We are offering baptism. We have we do have a candidate for baptism, and anybody else want to be baptized by um, baptized by immersion or the other forms that we have? Yeah, we ask that you uh, give your name to. Uh, um, a membership secretary or our Ms. 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 Wright or to our worship uh, leader uh, Ms. Latrina Holmes or Ms. Gail Jarvis or me we be baptized amen God bless you we, are, we have uh, visitors with us uh, I believe I believe are there any visitors stand, give us your name. You don't have to. You don't have to. Any visitors? You ain't got to stand. Just raise your hand. Any visitors? Everybody's a member. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Staley, for your leadership to Minister Clement, to Mr. Jerry Sistrom, to Devin, to our ushers today, to our brothers to this mayor chorus. God bless all of you. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. Amen. Continue to be filled today in the Lord. Amen. This is extremely important in these last days. If there are no more reminders, let us stand, please. Well, send it on down, Lord. Send it on down, oh Lord. Let the Holy Ghost come on down. Please send it on down, Lord. Send it on down, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost come on down. Well, we can't live right until you send it on down, oh Lord. Let the
have them right here. Okay, uh, they, they're taking registra uh, registrations in the back. Registration in the back, amen. 